Huh. Uh, I want to hold off on that one so that we can. Uh, let, let's. I'll let you do, uh, Josh. If we can put three on, so that I'm not the only one that talks on the okay. show. There we go. Hey, Josh. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. So you had a Pretty question. Good. Yes, I'm a Christian, and I had a bit. I had a couple questions. If I could ask for them real quick. Okay. Um, my first question was, what proof? for evidence can you guys provide that would justify your reason for not believing in God? Well, the question is not that we have to justify non-belief, it's that you have to justify what you do believe. So what's your um, proof or evidence that justifies your belief? Well, the thing is, though, I see your point, but many people say that atheism is the lack of belief or disbelief in God, but the thing is... correct. To me, it doesn't really matter whether theism is the belief that God exists or whether or it's just the lack of disbelief in God or what atheism is. I really think evidence is mandatory for both sides. No, no, no. I no, it's not. There, there's yeah. a burden of proof. If evidence would be mandatory if we were asserting that God does not exist. Well, but that's but the thing is, though, saying that I don't believe you, I would like, like if someone said, um, there's a cliff. There's a cookie in the pantry, and I said, I don't believe you. They may ask me to justify that, right? No. You don't need justification for not believing that there's a cookie in the pantry. It's the default well, position. Yeah. But the thing is, Matt also believe, brought up this thing that said, if something doesn't, if you can't prove something, then you shouldn't believe it, right? Yes. Well, the thing is, though, then that really doesn't give me any reason to believe that there is no God. No, 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 because, but hold on. I'm no, no, you hold on, because you said person A claims there's a cookie in the cabinet, and I don't believe them. That's not a belief. It is, it is a rejection of their claim. I am not yet convinced. That doesn't mean that I'm convinced there's no cookie in there. It's just like in a courtroom, we have a default presumption of, uh, of innocence, and it's the prosecution has a, a, to demonstrate guilt. I find God not guilty of existing, which is the, not the same thing as, as innocent, and the, the defense doesn't have to provide any defense. Well, if you can't, nobody really has been able to provide any convincing evidence that there is no God, whether they assert it or not. No one but has to do that. What, what difference does that make? David, so I was talking to David Silverman one time, and he said there is no God. And okay. So okay. that does mean he has the burden of proof. But sure, so is, call yeah, David and I ask him to him. defend it. I asked him to defend it, yes. And he said the problem of evil was his evidence Fine. that God does not exist. Look, okay. but I find Josh, be... Josh, I'm not yes. David Silverman. If you want to argue David Silverman's points, you can call David Silverman. If you want to argue our position, you call us. Which one do you want to do? All right, fine. I'll, all right, okay. I'll, so you asked for evidence, right? Sorry? You asked for evidence that God exists? Yeah, Jen, Jen asked why you believe. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I believe because I don't think it's really logical to be a non-believer after what I've seen because I've seen the debates between atheists and theists, but the thing is, when I watch the debates, many atheists and theists now agree that the universe had a beginning. Do you agree with that? It depends very much on, yeah. the, uh, yeah, on yeah. definitions. Okay, so like, do you believe that the universe had a beginning? Like I like, said, it depends yeah. on definitions. And, because and you know what? I, I really think it's irrelevant to your claim that your God exists. Well, Because you said you're on. a Christian, so you believe in a specific God. What's irrelevant? I, I think this, this whole, um, I guess, um, intellectual exercise about the beginnings of the universe is irrelevant because you believe in a specific God. Well, but the thing is, the way I see it, Atheists often used to argue that the universe is eternal, and people have done that, and some people still do that now. So but, are you once again trying to saddle us with some position that we don't hold? Because if you keep no, trying not, to get us to argue no, for positions that we don't hold, no, I'm not going to continue the call. No, dude. And it, no, 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 no. What I'm doing is I was just giving an example of something that people sometimes argue. Well, I'm not saying you that you know, hold this position. You know, theists, I'm not that, theists, I'm used, not th theists used to argue for the omnis that God was omnip omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent, but modern theologians have 
refined that so that they're no longer logically self-contradictory. Instead, when they talk about omnipotence, they don't mean all-powerful. They mean wait. maximally powerful, all-powerful that is logically wait, wait. possible. And wait, similar. No, contradictory. How Sorry, is that what? Contradictory. What? How is that self-contradictory? How is what self-contradictory? Omnipotence? Um, yes, exactly. How is that? Yeah, Can God make that. a rock so big he can't lift it? Logic is part of his nature. God no, 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 that doesn't answer the question at all. Do you believe that God can violate the laws of logic? No, I don't think okay, so. Then you, I, like mo the then you, like most modern theists, reject the original versions of omnipotence, which but would... It's really because he doesn't deny his nature. That, there's Josh. A difference in saying, but there's a difference in saying that someone does not deny their nature. That's self-contradictory. Saying that someone can deny their nature... I'm, I'm not interested in your post hoc rationalizations or your denial of what I'm saying. You don't believe something, and I'm pointing out why. Because, but, but, because but the, the, I mean, the, naive, the naive claim of omnipotence has been demonstrated to be logically contradictory. This is why theologians have... Square, as has a square circle. The square circle is also self-contradictory. Yes, which is why it doesn't the, exist, right? Exactly. The, the, right. This is why. I'm this is not why an atheist. Jesus this Christ, is why I'm not Josh. If you don't let me finish a sentence, I'm going to hang up on your ass. Fine. All right. This All is right. why I'm trying to help you not be stupider in your argument. There's I'm a reason kidding. why the old view of omnipotence was tossed aside by the people who believe that God is all powerful, and the new version is maximally powerful. That it, God, ha, God has all power, all possible power that is not logically contradictory. That solves all the problems that the old version of omnipotence had. So now they can claim that there's a God that is maximally powerful. Which is, by the way, I think what you would accept, right? Well, right now I'm not talking about an omniscient God or anything. Right now I'm just talking about evidence for God, right? No. I'm not making a claim to omniscience. I'm not making a claim to omnipotence. Yes. I'm not making a claim of omnibenevolence right now, I'm just talking about evidence, right? Okay? Okay, we tried to get you to talk about that before, but if you want to... Yeah, when we that. asked you for evidence, <laughs> what you talked about was an outdated version of the definition of a universe. And what I would have responded with is that people, there's now a distinction in the modern world between, for example, the cosmos, which is everything, it's the, the umbrella term, which may include the multiverse or many universes or alternate realities, the cosmos being everything that has ever existed. And under that model, it, it's not necessarily clear that the cosmos, in fact, had a beginning at all. Okay, what evidence is there that, the, that it's eternal? I do. No one okay. said it's eternal. No one, we just said that there's no evidence to believe that it had a beginning. But if, that doesn't mean it didn't if, have a beginning. Correct. Absence correct. Evidence is not evidence of absence. Correct. Actually, actually, what that statement means, absence of evidence is not evidence for absence, is true. But absence of evidence is evidence for absence when evidence would be expected. How? Excuse How? me. I tell you what, Josh, interrupt me before I finish the sentence again, and you can listen on hold. I'm getting ready to tell you if you would just have a measure of patience. Absence of evidence is evidence for, not confirmation of, but evidence for absence in the cases where evidence would be expected. For example, if you were to say, I have a dead human cadaver in the trunk of my car, and we go out and we open your trunk and we find no cadaver. That is an absence of evidence for your claim, which you can come up with post hoc rationalizations for by saying, that, ah, well, it got moved or it got shuffled away by corpse, corpse removing pixies. It's invisible. Or it's invisible. But it is, in fact, evidence for the conclusion that you are wrong. It isn't on its own enough confirmation to be confirmation that you're wrong. And it, but the nature of the claim that you have, that you have a dead body in your trunk, is something that you have to provide evidence for. And if we can look at the claim and say, if this claim were true, we would see A, B, C, D, and E. And then we go out and we find not A, not B, not C, not D, not E. Then that absence of evidence is evidence against your claim. It is not enough to confirm that your claim is false, but it is evidence against the proposition. It's the same on both sides, though, because that if there's an absence of evidence, that there is no God, then I can say the same thing for you. you assert, and I know that you're not asserting that right now. I yes. Know that you're not, 
but that, does, but that doesn't mean so, yeah, don't. you just keep right but on bringing it up. Mean, and every time, every single time we've offered an example, you want to reframe the example in terms of the contrary. When we say there's no good reason to believe that the cosmos isn't eternal, you made it as, as if we're saying it is eternal and want, to provide, want us to provide evidence for it. That wasn't the and claim we made. Let me ask you this, though. So okay. let's say John Doe killed Doc Masters. Let's say that. Let's see this in a scenario. Let's say John Doe killed what? Killed Buck Masters. Okay, John Doe killed Buck Masters. Okay, so the cops are investigating, but they have no evidence that Buck that he killed Buck Masters. Does okay. that okay. is that really evidence that Buck didn't do it? It is evidence against the the proposition if there would be evidence if we would expect evidence for it. Is it confirmation that he's innocent? No. But how does it prove that he didn't do it? It because doesn't. But I, if that's the case, then how is then if that's the case, then that means really it's not evidence because no. many criminal many criminologists will tell you this. I don't really see how Are you a criminologist? I'm not a criminologist. Do you have any expertise the in the field, or are you just parroting what you've heard? What do you mean? Well, if I see, you're going to go to criminologists, and neither one of us is a criminologist. I don't know why we would go to that. When I would hope that we would both agree that it is up to the prosecution to present evidence that John Doe did, in fact, kill Buck Masterson. And absent evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, we must rule not guilty. Okay, sir. Yes or okay, no? Well, that makes that portion makes, that portion makes sense because correct. If you don't so have if stuff, if so somebody like, if somebody claims that a god exists, they believe which that I did not, the, what? Which I did not do. Okay, so you're not so, claiming a god exists. So you're not a Christian? No, I believe I believe that God exists. Ah, making okay. A claim of fact, so if somebody claim claims that they believe things. that a God exists. I believe that a God exists. You, yes, believe, the, like, you believe that claim is true. I believe that God exists. Let me right. just say that, okay? You so believe, you just, but you don't believe that God exists, right? I do not believe your claim. Please make your case. It's just, let me give you some philosophical reasons to Let's not, not believe that, yeah. that the universe let me give you a philosophical reason why. No. Let's not. And fill off let's and let's answer the actual question that was asked. I'm get philosophical things can be evidence because no, they no. can't. How is it not? Are you saying that philosophy is dead? No, actually, yeah. I spend a great deal of time <laughs> studying and arguing philosophy. I'm saying that without a tie to anything material or epistemic, you have no you, case. So, and, right. and considering that the, considering believe, Josh considering your inability to construct a proper argument so far and your failure to understand that a disbelief of a claim is not a belief in its contrary, I'm not convinced you could make a philosophical argument. All right, okay. Do you believe that the universe is fine-tuned Stephen Hawking does? Um, excuse me? Like the universe is precisely fine-tuned. You do know that Stephen Hawking is, doesn't believe in a god, correct? Well, no, but that's not the point. So that's not the point. The point is, he believes that the universe is fine-tuned. Do no, he doesn't no, believe he doesn't. The, the universe is fine-tuned in the sense that you, you're implying by an agent. He t he accepts that there's an appearance of fine-tuning, the, the anthropic principle, uh, which doesn't require any sort of intervention from a supernatural agent. I'm not just, you, I'm not implying that God did it right now. I'm just asking if you believe that the universe is fine-tuned. Yes. No. no. Well, it depends. Okay, so what yeah, what, what, do, what do you mean by fine-tuned? What I mean by fine-tuned is there are physical constants in the universe that we live in. In other words, if you change even one physical constant in even the slightest way, there would be a universal catastrophe. Many many people not believe this, not just yes. atheists. Atheists believe this too. Like I said, like Stephen Hawking, yes. he agrees. Yes. People, he agrees that the universe. Yes, is yes we agree. Yes. Move on, please. Next. Okay, uh, but the thing is, I would like to ask you, if that is true, how would you explain that? Okay, goodbye. Yeah. That, my friend, hang up on line three, because my thing's not working, thank you. That, my friend, is the beginnings of an argument from ignorance fallacy, yeah. or, per, or actually argument from personal incredulity, that here's something that we don't seem to have an explanation for, and if you can't explain it, therefore I'm justified in, in accepting that my magical explanation is real. 
This is the same thing that was asked of me in a different context when somebody talked about how much n Moses seemed to know about physics and reality, and how did he know that if it wasn't divine intervention? And even if I have no answer to the fine-tuning of the universe, that doesn't get us one nanometer closer to your proposition that your explanation that a god did it is more reasonable. This is why not only can you not construct a proper philosophical argument or a proper valid and sound argument, you are in way out of your depth because you're just talking about as many different things as you can. You are so horribly confused about the topics that you even reference talking as if an appeal to an authority would be enough to make me question, oh, no, no. Because what you think of as fine-tuning and what you draw from it is completely different from the, one of the foremost experts in the field that you cited. You actually have to come with something really strong to get over scientific consensus. You have to come up with something really strong to show that the greatest minds who have looked at this are wrong. Not that they're necessarily right. Not that because somebody of some authority says it makes it right or that it's right as hell. It is just this is the most reasonable explanation until such time as you demonstrate that it's wrong. But if we're in a position where there's no explanation, where we have no idea why the universal constants excuse me, are the way they are, and you think that you do have an explanation, and your explanation is the God of the Bible, you cannot come with, well, you can't explain that. Tide goes in, tide goes out. You can't explain that. <laughs> no wonder Silverman <laughs> didn't finish talking to you. Yeah. So, um, 